screen right now. So I'm just going to show you how to access Copilot. So normally when you are on Power Apps or Power Automate, you'll have this little chat box that you can be able to use to build your app using Copilot in Power in Power Apps or Power Automate. Even Power Automate would have a similar thing. And how do you get this? So you probably may be wondering on your environment on how you get access to this thing. And you're saying, Somalia's my Power Apps homepage does not look the same as yours. Yes, the reason is because Copilot is currently mostly available on an environment that is you that is based in the us region so how do we help you help yourself get copilot this is how so you want to go to your power apps homepage or make the power apps.com or power automate then you go to the settings gear here at the top and then you click on admin center and then this will take you to the power platform admin center then what then will happen is that you need to go to the environment. So this is the entire admin center. Maybe you're using an, an organizational account from your organization or institution or company. So you may have limited rights on the admin center. Currently, I'm using my developer account. So you would need to go to environments and you would see maybe a list of environments. If it's your developer account, maybe you won't see any environment you will only see the default environment because it's an institutional account but that's not the whole point of what i'm trying to do here for you to have your own environment that has copilot all you need to do is to actually click on new and then come here and we can say some elizabeth deagles so i'll give it um, a name so i'm going to say some elizabeth deagles environment and then I will need to change the region instead of being Europe to United States, not preview United States, but United States preview United States just basically gives you the preview features of the power platform, but it doesn't have access to Dataverse. So what you would need to do is to just use the United States one because you need access to Dataverse if you want to use Copilot in the Power Platform. So you choose United States, then you change the type of your environment. Don't choose trial because it will run out after 30 days and you can only have two or sign up for two trial environments in your developer account or any other account that you're using to sign into Power Apps. You can only have either one or two trial uh, environments in which eventually after 30 days they go they they disappear. So in this case you would need to choose developer and then you can either give your environment a purpose, so it's best practice to actually create, uh, to, to give a, a, a purpose for your environment so that you can be able to understand what's going on in that environment. And then you can, there's a little new feature here that says create developer environment for makers and developers in your organization with a dev plan. You can either choose yes, and then everyone in the organization will have this specific environment enabled for them but you don't want to do that because you don't have access rights to do so so you leave that toggled off and then these are grayed out but they will be automatically automatically be created for you so it will add a dataverse data store or a dataverse da uh, a database in your environment automatically so once you click on next the only thing that you need to do is to choose a currency and a language. So you choose English United States again because you want to use Copilot and Copilot is available in mostly in the United States region for data centers. And then you choose your currency, whatever currency you want to use and make sure that you deploy sample apps and data. Why? Because if you want, for an example, on the Power Apps homepage, you also want to play around with the templates that are available uh, the app templates that are available in the power and power apps then you'll be able to have access to those template uh, template apps through this option by deploying sample apps and data and then the last thing that you need to do is to click on save and then once you've uh, once you've saved it it'll create your developer uh, account so i only have uh, a limit of three developer environments for a specific user so i've created three developer environments 
already so the only thing that i'll need to do now is to just do some cleanup in my tenant but once you click on save it will provision your developer environment it will take probably two three minutes then after that it will deploy the dataverse uh, database and then you can go to the power apps home page refresh the home page probably like five times and then check on here on environment on if it actually uh if it actually shows up onto your um, onto your list of environments that are available for your tenant or for your specific account. And then once it's available, you can click and choose that environment and then you'll be able to use Copilot in Power Apps or Power Automate, depends on you. Okay, another thing that I wanted to showcase to you guys is, so I'm just gonna go back to this tab and go to aka.ms forward slash prompt manager and then if i hit enter this will take me to github where april dunham who is a principal cloud advocate at microsoft worked with her team and some of the community members of the global power platform team to actually uh, let me try to do this uh, and showcase all of it i can see that my screen is a bit cut off there at the bottom but that's fine to actually build um, a prompt management solution. So like I mentioned earlier on, prompt management solution is for whichever organization is trying to use Copilot, use AI, uh, AI builder model, create text with GPT, and it requires prompts. And they have specific prompts that are specific to that organization or institution. They can download this prompt management solution, import it into their environment, and then they can be able to store all of their prompts for the organization without making them public. They will only be available for that specific organization, institution, or company. You can see, therefore, IT, marketing, customer service, sales, and then you can be able to add more prompts in as that company. And then obviously you can see whether you have a title generator using Azure OpenAI service, a regex uh, regular expression generator using Power Apps Copilot, a prompt generator using Azure OpenAI service. So it's available to be downloaded and imported back into your environment whenever you want to have a prompt management solution and if you want to contribute to this you can still contribute to it and you can download this make a few adjustments suggest this adjustment do a pull request on this github repo and then be able to um to to contribute to the sample that april actually did with the team you can actually see a few of the key features of the solution being listed out here on github where you can actually see all of them so right that's all that's available to you with prompting ai copilot and power platform and how you get access to it and how you manage your prompts there and i'll share those links onto the um onto the chat so that you can be able to have access to them so it's a pity we have a few minutes left I can't show you um, when we're using this actual prompts in Power Automate. Let's see. We have three minutes. Let's see if we can be able to do that in Power Automate and use this specific prompt. Right. OK, so I'm going to go to my app launcher, open Power Automate and a new tab, then go to my prompt library in the meantime. Copy this prompt just to show you the prompt library in action or the prompts from the prompt library in action go to power automate and hopefully power automate would be nice to us and actually open up and we can be able to use it right so i also have copilot in power automate and then all i have to do is just paste it in right so i have all of the prompt the only thing that i need to do is to remove these brackets here that says end of text that's just basically giving direction to copilot as this is where the text starts where i want to send this information to either sharepoint or excel or dataverse right so i can change that data source right so i'm going to remove start of text as well and then leave the prompt like this so it says build a flow, a workflow that gets customer feedback from Microsoft Forms, add the feedback to SharePoint, 
and message the customer uh, with the, the submitter's name, right? So the next thing is to click on submit. And then what's going to happen is that Copilot and Power Automate will then try to see if it can suggest a flow to you, and then it does. My prompt was saying, build a workflow that gets customer feedback from a Microsoft form, so you can see the trigger of the flow is a Microsoft form, and some of the actions are for Microsoft forms, and then send that data back to SharePoint, which is creating an item in SharePoint, and then send an email to the person who submitted that response on the form. Right, so these are the uh, suggest, suggested actions of the suggested flow. I can click on next if I'm happy with that. And then I can set up my connections here. And then I click on create flow. And then it will create the flow for me. And then all I need to do is to just make updates to all of the actions and triggers that are there. So the reason why it says invalid parameters is because it's empty. So I haven't cho chosen a form that I want to use. So I can choose session feedback, for example, or Power Platform Solution Support. And then I choose the same thing here. And then I just configure all of the details. I need a site address, need a list name, and then I want to be able to create all of the information that is coming from my response. So for an example, if I say uh, Digo Demos, which is my SharePoint site, the list name would be probably customer feedback. If I'm not mistaken, I have a list, a SharePoint list there. Then the only thing that I need to do is to just click on show all to see all of my columns in SharePoint. Then you can see there's a title column, there's improved product, there's full name, there's phone number, there's email. If I wanted to use or fill dynamic content for email. All I have to do is uh, hit on my keyboard, the fo forward slash, and then it will ask me, do I want dynamic content or an expression? I can insert dynamic content, and then I can choose dynamic content that is coming from my previous action, which is from the form. So I can choose email, and then it adds in the dynamic content, and then I can do uh, everything, the same thing for each and every single column of my SharePoint list. Then for send an email, all I need to do is specify the uh, specify the email that the email is going to, and then the subject, and then the body, and then I can also use Copilot here on the site to update this flow and the actions in it. But three minutes is over for me, so I'm going to stop there. That's just how quickly and simple you can be able to use the prompts that are coming from the prompt library in Power Automate or Power Apps based off of whichever AI co-pilot or AI that you want to use with those prompts. So with that, because we're out of time, hopefully we'll see Shyster's presentation and demo next week. So make sure you join this uh, community call next week, same time, uh, same place. You will have um, updates that are coming to you on our LinkedIn page and also you'll have access to this specific recording and the demo that we did today on our YouTube channel because it will be available on there. And if you want to sign up to actually be part of the community calls and do your demos as well and be like Shyster and Safura, then you can be able to reach out and tell us that you want to demo whatever you are learning, as simple as it may be, as long as it solves a specific problem. We are more than happy to help. And if you just want to share what you're learning at all or entirely, then we're more than happy for you to do your presentation to the community. And with that, I want to say thank you for attending this week's community call and the last community call of the month of September. And this is where we ended off. See you on the next one.